Hey folks, Kiltman here. Kiltman at your services. How are you all? I hope you're all doing very, very well. Now this video, as the title would suggest, is an update, a follow-up from the very previous video I did about the announcement of Warner Brothers doing not one, but two more Lord of the Rings movies. And the first one, arriving in 2026, they've scheduled it in already, is The Hunt for Gollum with Andy Serkis reprising his mocap role as Gollum, of course. But he's also directing it with Peter Jackson, Philippa Boyens and Frau Walsh on, on standby as producers for the original trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy. So the family is all coming back. But that title was very familiar to a lot of people. The Hunt for Gollum. Sure, I've seen a fan film called that. Yeah, and indeed there was from 2009, 15 years ago, Chris Bouchard, who produced, wrote, directed, and had a hand in the music for it as well, put this 38 minute fan movie out there with great scenery, a great story, which is based in Tolkien about, it's just before Frodo is gonna undertake the quest with the ring and all of that. But Gandalf knows that Gollum knows too much and he falls into the enemy's hands He's going to give up the names of Baggins and the Shire. So he, he gets together with Aragorn. says, you've got to find this little imp. You've got to find him. Bring him in. But that mission is fraught with danger. And Aragorn will meet packs of orcs, have battles. He'll meet a ring wraith. And he'll also manage to find Gollum himself. Thus ending the hunt for Gollum. And that is from Tolkien, that is what Tolkien wrote or certainly alludes to when Gandalf talks about Gollum and his prior histories. Now, they made this film back in 2009 and it's been sitting there minding its own business on YouTube, happily building up its own fan base. Millions and millions and millions of hits and views and a lot of praise. Peter Jackson himself offered praise to it. He, he admired the professionalism of it and the storytelling. He said it was great. And then, <sighs> Warners announce they're doing their own hunt for Gollum. So, ooh, but we can't allow another version to exist, which probably has the same story which we're gonna be using. Oh no! So they smacked a the copyright ban on it. Yeah. Chris Bouchard, who made the movie, had approached the Tolkien estate, and presumably New Line as well, and got the okay. You make a fan movie, it's non-profit. You're not making any money off someone else's intellectual property. So you're not in any trouble. You can do these things, providing they've said that's okay. But you're not making any money, so you're not exploiting it. All you're doing is showering love and adoration on a much-loved franchise and bringing more attention to said franchise. So it's a win-win scenario. The original doesn't lose anything at all. And all Chris Bouchard and people like him who make these really affectionate and you know just highly imaginative and born out of love fan films they gain a bit of notoriety and could even get a step on the, the rungs of the ladder to hollywood who knows I'm not stepping on anyone's toes but yeah warners went ah, ah, not having that copyright ban so i reported on that and wouldn't you know it <laughs> it's been reinstated victory victory for a small guy in our case, the Hobbits and Gollum himself. Victory is ours! Brilliant, brilliant. So it's, it's actually good news. I was packing a lot of hate on Warner for doing this because I could see no real motive for it other than their own exploitative and narcissistic gain. Well, I don't know if Peter Jackson himself has had a few words in the ear of a... Uh, Warner Discovery CEO David Zaslav's ear. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But certainly, well, 24 hours later, they reneged and it's now reinstated. So you can enjoy it now. And I'm going to put the link to it below. It's not hard to find anyway, but unlike Gollum, you've got to hunt Gollum, but you, you haven't got to hunt too far to find this fantastic little movie. You've got Gandalf, you've got Aragorn, you've got another ranger. You've got orcs, you've got ring rates. Oh, it's everything. All in a condensed, sort of nice, tight little scenario in the woods. 
They filmed it in, in Wales, I think, and also in uh, Epping Forest, I think. I need to watch it again myself, but you are hearing its score right now, and its score is wonderful. It's very, very in the vein of Howard Shaw's score for Lord of the Rings. You will recognise themes that are in there. I mean, they don't nick wholesale the themes that Howard Shaw came up with. So they're not, they're not any trouble with that either. But it's definitely, it, the film looks like it's from Lord of the Rings, the Peter Jackson trilogy, and it sounds like it as well, which is exactly what Chris Bouchard was trying to do. And as I said before, this is what fans do. If they've got that amount of talent and that ability and that drive and ambition to create their own version. And it wasn't like condensing Lord of the Rings into its own, their own version. They were doing a chapter, an element which wasn't in the movie at all. So perfect. And it fills a little gap in as well. So it's great. Now, very clearly, judging by Warner's attitude towards it, that must be what they're going for with the hunt for Gollum. What else could it be? I said in a previous video, Go Gollum's lived for centuries. He didn't just live in a cave and talk to himself and, and bash fish on the head and then eat them raw. He didn't just do that. No, he had a relationship with the great Shelob. Shelob the spider. He worked for Shelob as a spy and also her servants. He would bring food to her. So there's a lot of stories there. And he treads on the toes of many other people. Other villagers, other hamlets. He, he nicks food. This is how they, they get word that he's been seen in a local village stealing fish from people's windows. <laughs> and then he actually catch him up. He's sitting on a roof eating a fish. <laughs> but it's a story. Gollum has much more stories to tell. But beyond this one, you would really be making things up. As David Zaslav said, uh, we're going to explore storylines yet to be told. I did scoff at that remark yesterday. But hey, they've done the right thing, so I'm not gonna knock Warners anymore. I am still sort of on the fence about this, the big project with Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis, I don't think is a proven major talent at directing, but he is great as Gollum. So, and if the story is nice and tight, and don't make it epic, but with Peter Jackson pulling some strings maybe, you might want to stretch it out to another two, three fucking installments. You know what he's like, you can't leave alone. Why make it small when you can make it much, much bigger? I mean, I love this version of King Kong, as I've said many times, but I do struggle to watch it now because I think I'm a huge fan of, the, of King Kong, 1933. King Kong 1976, oh yes. And I love his version too. I don't like King Kong meeting Godzilla and I don't like any of that shit at all. But King Kong, the story itself, fantastic. And you can't beat the original um, uh, Cooper and Shoutsack 1933 original with Willis O'Brien's stop motion effects. You can't beat that, it's perfect. And it's tight. It's epic, it's got tons and tons of action and adventure, some great characters, and just a wonderful story overall. Peter Jackson couldn't help himself. He had to stretch it. Every scene is elongated by 10 to 15 minutes each. Everything is just heightened and glorified and just dragged out, stretched, to the point where the, it loses its elasticity. As much as it's a great spectacle, and, I, and again, Contradictory, I know, but I kind of, I, if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to watch the extended cut because there's bits in that which I like which aren't in the theatrical cut. But even so, the theatrical was way too long at three hours. It was just, he can't help himself, can he? So I hope, with the hunt for Gollum, I hope he's going to let Andy Serkis, you know, do what is necessary and not drag things out. But again, as I said yesterday, we don't know who's writing this. Peter Jackson, uh, Philippa Boyens and Fran Walsh all worked on adapting Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Now, we don't know who's writing this, but they're producing and they are meant to be heavily involved with the whole thing. Does that not mean they might be writing it as well? And again, going by what happened yesterday, 
by the time I've put this video out, it'll be confirmed. Oh yes, Peter Jackson's writing The Hunt for Gollum. I'm like, oh God, gotta do another video now, confirming it. <laughs> no, this was just basically to say, set the record straight, that, you know, The Hunt for Gollum, the original from 2009, is back. It's back. You can watch it and enjoy it. And I've got a real sneaky feeling that that is exactly the story that Warners are going for with Andy Serkis. I don't think, I don't see what else it could be. He could, Gollum could have caused trouble in any environment really, and then scarpered into the, the Misty Mountains and all that. Like, and then you will have people, like, he nicked so and so, he's done this. We'll be just go and get him and bring him to justice. Or it could be Sauron and his minions going after him. Rains to be seen. But it won't be cheap. Not with these guys behind it. And the very fact that they're going to do another you know, big live action movie in the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth mythology afterwards. Um, we don't know what that is at all. We've no idea about that. They could be set in a different time period, different age altogether. But then again, you've already got that with um, the Rings of Power. Jesus Christ. But you've got War of the Rehirim coming in December this year, animated. Helm Hammerhand and Helm's Deep and inaugurative battles taking place there. Cheers, Joel. And cheers, Chris Bouchard. You're back in business, mate. And if you think about it, all this controversy about your little movie, that's only brought more people coming to find your little movie. And now it's back. Listen, they should be approaching you, mate. They should be to come and at least work on this new version. Because you did it first. Yes, you did. And you got a couple of people, your Gandalf and your Aragorn, eh, they do look pretty good, you know. Look, it's clearly a low budget fan based film, but the energy, the zest, the talent, it shines through. And you know, there's so many fan movies. I've been asked a few times, well, not recently, but to do an Escape from New York fan movie. Yeah, yeah, because I'm the big Snake Plissken fan and all that. So we're going to do it, set it round here, because I just down the road from where I am right now is a place called New Brighton. So we're going to call it Escape from New Brighton. And believe you me, oh, it's a dangerous place down there. And it, it could lend itself really for some of the, uh, the landmarks down there to being pretty spectacular. But no, <laughs> no, not with this big fat face, not now, you know. Cheers, you But I could, I could be an orc, I suppose. Or a big bruising orakai, you know. Meat's back on the menu, boys, you know. Right, well, let's listen to a bit of this. As I say, this was done by Adam Langston, Andrew Ho oh, hang on a minute. Andrew Scrab Scrab you tennis. That's a, a name to conjure with, isn't it? Andrew Scrab you tennis. And and Chris Bouchard himself. So a bit of a jack of all trades is our Chris. Just when I say well let's listen to this, it goes to a quiet phase. Charming. But there's visual effects in it too. There's a lot of matte backgrounds to create more of an epic landscape. So I'll champion, you know, a fan movie. Because I, I, that's that's me, I, I'm like that. If I had the talent to do it, I would do it. But it is just, all it is is showing your admiration and your love for a much cherished movie franchise. There's plenty of Predator ones out there, which are pretty damn good. And in fact, there was one which was very similar to Prey. Very similar, a native um, indigenous girl has to fight a predator. Yeah, and that came way before Dan Trachtenberg's Prey with Amber Mid Thunder. I do love that movie though. But nothing's original folks, nothing. Lord of the Rings was very original, but it's also based on a lot of Celtic and Nordic and medieval history. So, you know, 
there's only, what is it? There's five separate stories that you can tell. I've forgotten what they are. Hatred, rage, jealousy, I don't know, I don't know, something like that. And everything else is an offshoot of those, but you can have a gazillion variants and offshoots. But these days, absolutely nothing is original. Hollywood itself and all the big studios do nothing but plunder what's gone before. Oh, we must do a sequel to this. We must, oh, we're gonna reboot it. We're gonna retweak it. We're gonna do a prequel. We're gonna do a sidequel. Oh, you get nothing but that. And even the things which are, well, they're not ripping off. They're not part of the original franchise. They're exactly a carbon copy of something you've seen a million times before. So there is nothing new out there. It's characterizations and stylizations, the way that people bring these to the screen, that's how you, they're different. I mean, George Miller, Mad Max, he reinvented Mad Max like four times so far. Mad Max 79, Mad Max 2 Road Warrior, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Mad Max Fury Road. They're all different. They contain the same ingredients, but they're told in vastly different ways. And of course, Furiosa, a little film you may have heard me mention a few times uh, is set to be even bigger and more epic and more mythological than anything he's done before. So he is one visionary filmmaker that has a clear, finite vision of what's to come or what he wants to deliver. But it's all the, you know, there's going to be action, there's going to be chases, there's going to be vehicles, there's going to be crazy madcap characters. And you know a revenge drama, and yeah, so he's one of the few working in the industry right now who is profoundly single-minded and got an idea. Which I'm going to put this on the screen, and you won't see anything like it before, unless I made it. <laughs> but each of the films has been different. Now Peter Jackson was like that for a while. But then again, his earlier movies, Bad Taste, uh, Brain Dead, Meet the Feebles, were completely singular, bizarre visions. And then, of course, what was it? Frighteners, and it? Brilliant. And uh, what else did we get? Well, obviously, Lord of the Rings. But that wasn't his, that was based on a book. <laughs> and King Kong was nothing but a love letter to a film which introduced him to, to movies and the imagination and the idea of making films himself and it was nothing but a colossal love letter and then the hobbit well this music's great i don't know how they came up with it with the budget which wasn't much they haven't got an orchestra <laughs> So I'm presuming a lot, maybe some instruments were genuinely played, a small ensemble, which was then put into a machine and embellished. But it does sound great. It sounds like it's come from the same, you know, music sheets as Howard Shaw's score. Listen to it. Again, when I said listen to it, it goes quiet. And I like the fact that the film itself runs for 38 minutes and the score itself runs for 29 minutes, just over 29 minutes. So it's, it's pretty much the entire movie has got score to it. And I love that. So you recognize all this, but it hasn't been copied. It's just in the same vein. Yeah, it's, it's got these sort of the darker, twisted, you know, what's Gollum been up to? He is a villain. Can't trust him. But as I said yesterday, you know, the, there's a lot of scope to explore with his psychology. We, I know The Lord of the Rings, Two Towers and Return of the King definitely gave us loads to explore with his character. But there's a lot more to do. 
He could, he, I mean, in their new version for Mortis, he could be a hero for all we know. He could be, he, maybe it's just one of those things he's doing right for once. But then because, oh, he gets hunted down and oh, they did the right thing. And he's still persecuting me. Oh, that's it. You know, Hobbits is. Baggins is. You know. It's definitely cut from the same cloth, isn't it? So folks, have a look at it. If you haven't seen it already, and many of you will, since my video, will have discovered, hang on, he said it was, he said they, they banned it. It was blocked to copyright. Well, I've just found it and there it is. That guy's an idiot! Well, yeah, you're not wrong, I am an idiot, but at the time of that recording, it was still blocked. Yeah, it has got all that, that, that mystique, that power, that grandeur of the ring score, and you can recognise themes from it but they're not they're not the, the themes it's just done in that style really good really good score very very impressed with this actually right folks there you go it's a bit of good news a bit of good news from middle earth it's been reinstated Let's just pray it hasn't been taken down again. And I'll be like, oh, what? What? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past this David Zaslav. I don't trust that name, do you? David, if you're watching. <laughs> like you're watching this. But if you are watching, give us a job, mate. Give us a job. Go on, give us it. I can do that. Give us a job. Poor Bernard Hill, King Theoden. <laughs> passed away just the other day, whilst me and my son were meeting the Hobbits at Liverpool Comic Con. How the world turns, eh? How the world turns. Right, the sun is shining, the pub is calling, so I'm out of here, folks. So please, in the meantime, in this ever, well, victorious in between time for now, Please keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic, and I'm going to see you all. Let the fans win the day. Yes. <laughs>